Welcome to Navigating Change, everyone. My name is Pete Bright, and I am sitting around the table here with Howard Teibel. Hello, Howard. Good morning, Pete. It, uh, uh, we have another uh, another meaty one this morning, and I, I'm really looking forward to this one because it seems to tie into to so much of the uh, drudgery of work that, that I hear my peers talking about uh, uh, from day to day. That is, how do we align goals to organizational strategic plans? Oy. I know it seems so big, but I want to. <laughs> if we could just take a step back for a second and talk about uh, and really define our terms here. How do you define your goals versus the the context of the organization's strategic plan? How would you start that conversation? Uh, well, <laughs> oh, don't, be, a, don't be so excited I'm tired. about it. Right? I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm falling asleep. This is an overwhelming <laughs> one, you know. And and there there is so much going on these days around redefining strategic plans i mean since the economy has done what it's done everybody is trying to figure out at a senior level how do we reposition our organization whether it's in higher ed whether it's in healthcare whether it's in corporations we're we now want to position ourselves going forward with a leaner workforce you know all that all that good stuff mm-hmm. uh, and so these these strategic plans get written, and then there's an expectation by the managers who weren't part of that strategy design to inherit it and then to figure out how to actually make it happen. And that's where the thing breaks down pretty quickly because so much of this is about a translation. You know, senior management speaks a certain language. It, it is almost like... They're speaking Chinese, and the people that are the managers are speaking English. And they can say the words. You, you can actually hear the words, and you, and you say, yeah, th- that makes perfect sense. That's a great strategic plan. And one of the ways I know that this doesn't translate well is if I walk almost into any place, where whether it's a manager or whether it's a staff or it's even sometimes a senior person, and I, and I was to look around and say, all right, what is it that what is your team doing fundamentally that's contributing to the strategic plan of the organization? The, boy, that in itself would cause people to step back and go, you know, nothing. Our, well, <laughs> actually, they are. But the problem is, it is the challenge here is that they're being asked to line up their work with a new direction. Oh, but by the way, keep doing what you're doing. And I, I think senior management so underestimates what it means to keep the trains running, plus also line up with their strategic plan. So this is really a two-way street conversation, and the translation has to happen through dialogue. You know, obviously there are tools like benchmarking tools, balanced scorecard. There are ways to translate, and that's why these tools are becoming more uh, commonplace. So that we're all speaking the same language. You know, we have a goal to get in this particular domain, financial. These are our benchmarks we want to get towards. And then if you can do that, that can start the process. But even with that, to translate the benchmarks into departmental actions, that is very, very difficult. And, you know, this is another one of those... Uh, elements that needs to be managed versus something that you can just solve it. There is no panacea for this one. This is about the willingness of the people on both sides of the table, the managers who are expected to execute on this, making sure that they understand what's expected of them, and if they don't, that they ask. Now, that's already a problem because, you know, if I get a directive the last thing I want to do is show the person that works that I work for that I don't understand their strategic plan. Right. You know, people are so uh, uncomfortable with, the, you know, the, the one thing I've done, probably, probably the, the best phrase, the, the thing that propelled my career, started my career in the right direction is when I started to say, I don't know. And when I said that, for the first time in front of a group, I remember the fear I had in, in being a sham, like all of a sudden people. And then I realized that what people did was they trusted me more because I was willing to tell the truth about what I knew and didn't know. Hmm. And 
So there's there's one place that breaks down quickly it is that managers need to have the chutzpah to tell the truth to the people they work for. I don't understand how I'm going to translate this. Can you help me? And and conversely, senior management has to be willing to say, let's not assume that we have been completely clear about this plan and get in there and give the people that work for us permission to share with us what they don't get. You know, we spend too much time uh, thinking that if we deliver a verbal communication, we've communicated. Saying something does not mean you communicate it effectively. And as much as it seems crazy that most of all of these strategies or discussions we have come back to communication, I think in this one in particular, the alignment is is about dialogue and communication. You know, that is, uh, that, that's an almost magical point. And I, I spent several years uh, of my career as a middle manager, right? Uh, even as a middle manager, I remember thinking, wow, so many of my peers in middle management are completely useless. But every now and again, you would see where the real benefit of an artful and talented manager uh, lies. And that is being able to take and translate these directives to be able to internalize them and then communicate them in a way that staff can then understand. Because really, that's the next challenge, right? I mean, that's the challenge is to make sure that they can take these and at the management level, turn it into daily work. Yeah, you know, and the thing about that that I think is an inherent challenge that I would imagine anyone listening to this who's a manager would nod their heads is that a lot of work is structured around putting out fires, that what is the next breakdown? And the last thing I need is something that's going to disrupt that. It's almost like the train is going along and then senior management comes along and says, new direction, and you're expected to figure out how to keep the basics going and keep, let's say, you're, you're, if you're building things or if you're, you know, if you're doing the business of higher education and you're, you know, keeping students in the university and whatever, uh, that you're expected then to take on an additional piece that is only going to add more burden. And then what you have is still 75% of your time putting out fires. So, uh, again, no panacea. But there needs to be, from the manager's point of view, a willingness to say to their staff, we are going to treat fires, we're, our goal is to move this towards putting out fires is an exception to how we work, and that we need to help others solve their own problems. A lot of putting out fires, by the way, is because people take on other people's problems. Sure, yeah. And that's a huge problem in organizations where instead of saying, listen, I can help you with that, but I'm not going to do it for you. And finding an artful way as a manager to be less interested in, you know, sort of being liked by your peers or being liked across your organization, to be willing to set boundaries about what you do and don't do until you do that, it's almost impossible to take on a new strategic direction. Now, once you uh, once you have this, uh, uh, this you're sort of internalized this. What are you then asking of your staff on a day to day basis? How apparent is the executive language you talked about earlier? Uh, you know how how uh, you know how much impact do you want that to have on their day to day activity? Well. Again, I think uh, most of our conversations are about balance. So you can overwhelm people with this language about strategic direction that really doesn't translate into what they do day to day. So I think that there needs to be an exercise that is not so much about giving them, here is what we're doing, but to actually work with your team to first, let, let's translate this. What does this mean we're doing? You know, what I like to do a lot, which seems to help because there's so much that uh, people get stuck 
in you know not having enough time is to prioritize and you know one of the ways that helps people to think about what they should be focusing on is that if you were having a dialogue about okay we have a strategic plan uh, one of them is cost cutting three percent. We need to find opportunities in in, uh, in cost reductions uh, in these areas. What are the top three things we could do in that area? And then you get consensus that, or at least understanding among the group that this is where we're going. And then you write it down, and you make sure that you revisit it periodically. And then you go to your team and you say, "All right, listen, we need to make sure that." the actions we're doing are consistent with those three things that are going to contribute to the strategic plan. You know, one of the things we do is things called process mapping. And process mapping is really about creating a visual a, a visual representation of what links to what. And I don't know about others, but for me personally, when I can see in a picture Here's the here's the picture of the strategic plan. Here's a here's a picture of what the goals are, and this is how they link together. It burns an image in my mind, and then the manager's job is to sort of every day wake up, and then look at their team and say, "What are we focused on today? All right, uh, we're not, we need to based on this milestone and and relative to the strategic plan, we're going to put the focus on here." It is a constant battle. And the bottom line there, and you need to have the right people in those roles because that's not a trivial task mm. to uh, to help steer your staff towards uh, the management of a um, strategic plan. And and unfortunately, many people have not been given the training to do this or don't have the communication skills to do that. So that's that's another dilemma that plays out in. You know, senior management has to think about do they have the right people in the right roles. Any tools or sources, resources that you would recommend to to uh, managers who want to get better at at playing that uh, that sort of middle role? Well, let's see. W one of the ways that uh, I have done it in in some of our coaching work is, you know, if I if I'm working with somebody, you know, one of the things that I'll, I'll ask them is, you know, who in your who in your organization. Uh, that does maybe at the same level as you or someone that you're actually aspiring to be like, who, who is somebody that you admire? And I am a firm believer in mentoring that I have found for myself when I have identified people that exhibit behavior or do things in a way that where I say to myself privately, you know, I wish I could do things more like that. The thing you could do is, and it's very empowering, is to reach out to this person and say, listen, uh, you know, go to lunch with them and say, you know, I've been watching you over the last whatever time, and I and I uh, and I'd love to learn about how you do this because you do this so well, and this is an area I want to improve. Very often, people are so uh, flattered by that, and it's a great opportunity for them to teach somebody else what they're doing and, and to reinforce their own skills. But you can learn a ton from your colleagues who you admire. You know, the second one obviously is to hire, you know, a coach. And, you know, the interesting thing about coaching is, you know, I think great coaching is less about what the coach knows, but being more of a reflection on what the person is uh, thinking and where they're trying to go. So, you know, if you're looking for a coach, the, the thing that I think is of most value is somebody that one you can be comfortable with, but also somebody that allows you to see yourself and to uncover where you're trying to go versus trying to impose, for example, you know, this is what you should be doing. And, and so I think those two strategies can be very helpful to managers uh, in terms of making progress uh, in trying to lead their team or lead down as well as lead up. Seems like the only silver bullet here is experience. Yeah, and for some people, even with experience, they don't get it. But many <laughs> people do. I mean, I'd listen, we're listen, I, I think the whole conversation we're having, all of our conversations are about, you know, you know, progress, not perfection, right? Yeah. We're all continuing to get better for the most part at what we're doing. And experience in some ways is about you know, being willing to stick it out over the long term and keep learning from your past mistakes and then and then uh, getting new successes. Well, as ever, Howard, thank you for your experience. Uh, this has been another great show. 
Thank you, Pete. It's uh, I really enjoyed this one. Excellent. On behalf of Howard, my name is Pete Wright. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, this has been Navigating Change. Mm-hmm.